Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we are doing some uh, touch-ups to the uh, orbital intercept of uh, Clarkson Alpha. This is all uh, speddy uppy bits. Uh, as a matter of fact, this whole episode is speddy uppy bits, which is a decision I kind of greatly regret in retrospect. But uh, time is becoming a little limited. Um, anyway, we're just uh, trying to adjust our intercept with Jupiter so that we can slingshot appropriately to Saturn, and then we'll make uh, future corrections after we enter Jupiter's SOI. Uh, this was, again, kind of a struggle, but uh, totally worth it for uh, the resultant path. It's just uh, a beautiful planetary alignment. Uh, so we really do just have to take uh, the greatest advantage of it that we can. And there, after not too much struggle, we've got the intercept we need. We will uh, get ourselves angled into the node and uh, set up an alarm in Kerbal Alarm Clock so that we can just nail this node right on the, right on the head. Anyway, we're going to head back to the uh, Space Center because uh, I recently had an idea. I've got this other um, Saturn Moon flybys mission that I guess I built a long time ago. I probably did a build a sode for it. And then... Um, kind of forgot about it. But anyway, I had this idea, and I'm really not so sure it's gonna work, or even if it's tenable. But I thought, hey, we've got this window, and I owe it to myself, and probably to all of you, to just go ahead and give it a shot. If it fails, it fails. No big deal. Uh, Y'all have watched me screwed up more than enough stuff to where uh, this really wouldn't uh, be much to brush off. But anyway, I figured, since we've got this glorious window and this magical planetary alignment, what if we could get a flyby of multiple planets, uh, being uh, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Uranus, Neptune? I mean, we might not go for all four, but anyway, the plan here is to fly this past as many planets as we can uh, with the film canisters that uh, have returnable data, and then see if we can't return this to Earth. Kind of like the uh, Venus Return Project, but on a much grander interplanetary scale. So, uh, I've placed a heat shield on the top of our two cores. I'm going to give them uh, independent thrusters. and ooh, We have an extra upgrade for our uh, Aerozine and N2O burning thrusters, which is nice. A little bit more efficiency. Uh, make sure their fuel is set up appropriately. And uh, the long-range comms we can ditch, which we will do once we are close enough to Earth to utilize these short-range comms. It'll also save a little bit of Delta V. And, yeah, we'll go back to the Agena Avionics core, although I am considering switching that out to the Delta because it's lighter and we're going to be using RTGs. So the power consumption might be a thing. Anyway, uh, two film return cameras gives us uh, ten opportunities, five per camera bay, to uh, take pictures, which if we do hit all four moons, and or, I'm sorry, all four planets, wow, and we can cover possibly high space and low space. I think they are actually biome-specific, but if we're coming in equatorially, like I assume we would for such a multi-planet slingshot maneuver, uh, looks like we're only going to get the equatorial biome but hopefully from both high space and low space. That makes eight total, so we need uh, eight total opportunities for pictures, so we need, best we can do closest to that is ten uh, for five per bay, whatever, times two. You get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we'll simplify the design out and just give it a single tank and a single AJ-10 advance, but we do also have a new AJ-10 uh, available for unlocking. Uh, which we will go ahead and use. Better ISP, still infinite ignitions, um, ullage pressure fed, etc. And we'll keep it simple with just uh, the basic quads, although it does look like one will be firing into the lens of our camera. That's probably not the greatest idea, yeah. but I'll deal with that in a second. We're going to um, go up to four RTGs and just leave them all on the uh, main part of the probe. Now I'll move the thrusters into a more appropriate location. Uh, we're basically abandoning all other science experiments just in favor of getting these pictures in the awkwardness that is this uh, little interplanetary badass. So, uh, I'm relatively happy with that. We're coming in at just a, a little over 10 tons, which um, really shouldn't be a big deal, but considering I'm trying to do this super rushed, this rocket's just not going to work out. So I built this! Uh, I basically built it just by resizing tanks from that uh, DN2. 
Uh, we have two RS-25s on the core stage and two boosters with five E1 advanceds uh, apiece. And so uh, this, I imagine, will play, replace some of the mid-range DN series that we are currently fielding now. The, uh, the DN4B, which I guess is the only mid-range one that we have. I think I only flew that once or twice. It had three HG3s or three J2s, and at one point, one J2 Aerospike and two J2Ss. Um, but so it's uh, considerably smaller than the DN5B. Uh, still utilizing the B upper stage, although in this case it is a full-scale B upper stage. Not even really a full-scale, because the runtime is not maxed out for that HG3. Uh, so it does have significant capabilities, but this was just a simulated test flight to see uh, if this thing was going to give me the deliverable Delta V that I would need to throw something weighing 10 tons at Jupiter and start this whole daisy chain of slingshots and energetic opportunities together, I guess. So uh, I spent a lot of time just kind of concentrating and trying to get the ascent path a little more dialed in since switching to the RS-25s over the HG-3s. Uh, I've had some trouble not having to pitch way up towards the uh, middle of the burn, uh, halfway to orbit stage or so, so I'm still trying to dial that in. Uh, I swear I'll get better. I just... There goes booster sep, and man, they are heavy. We might have to add some retro rockets. Boink. Yeah, just a, a little love kiss on the way down. Only one of them lost a nose cone. I guess we'll be all right. But uh, those boosters did not put me nearly as high up as I would have liked. We're still only at about 70 kilometers altitude, which is a touch bit shy from what I usually expect from the DN series. As far as booster sep usually comes around... 75 to 85 kilometers and we're very quickly in the 90 kilometer range where you can start your fairing set but the uh, the added efficiency I guess from those RS 25s I mean considering they're replacing a variant that had three engines this only has two engines but they're providing more thrust than those three engines combined uh, which is unlike our replacement for the lower grade or the lighter weight DN series so we'll go ahead and boot our probe now that we have fairing set. You can see we're still at a fairly steep angle versus our prograde vector. Um, I think this is just going to be the ascent path for this rocket. Notice that I'm not angled down and then pitched back up. I'm just kind of... This is kind of what it has to do considering it's a lower thrust to weight ratio there on booster set. But I'll start to angle it in and figure out that, uh, that angle to prograde ascent path that we need to get dialed in for this. Uh, and the more I learn on some of these lighter variants, the better I will be when we get to the really heavyweight stuff, when we go up to five or even seven RS-25 engines for some of the really big stuff. Um, I have been working on that launch vehicle, although uh, nothing I'm not so embarrassed to show you just yet. Soon, soon, I promise. And it is a very long burn on this core stage indeed. I think we're at 9 minutes and 40 seconds uh, total runtime on these RS-25s, which is coming up to their theoretical limit of about 10 minutes. These are also the D-slash-E variants, so they are the most upgraded RS-25s. Uh, considering I have all of the RS-25 variants available to me, I see no real point in using any of the lesser models. The efficiency is the same across the board, really you just get more thrust, and I actually don't think there is a test flight config for them yet, which makes me feel a little cheaty, but I promise not to run them past the 10 minute mark. That just seems a little wrong. Yeah, anyway, th this is going to be quite a long burn to orbit, but uh, that's kind of what we expect from these Hydrolox series of launchers, so I'm going to use the opportunity instead to uh, talk about some other things. And so if you'll pardon me for being a little selfish for a moment, I am going to just discuss my life a little bit. Uh, things for me are about to get crazy. Um, I recently just started back up at school. I, I still work a full-time job, and I'm getting ready to move. Yay! Uh, the bad news is, is that might uh, affect my ability to crank out episodes as regularly as I would like, at least for just a couple of weeks coming up. 
Um, I do feel really bad about it, and I'm certainly going to still try to keep at least somewhat of a regular upload schedule, but I, I can't promise it. And also, because of all this impending hecticness, uh, this coming weekend is about my last free weekend before I have to start really diving into this move and starting getting the, the new place ready and all of this other nice stuff. And while I know I'm not quite at the 300th episode, I figured it's a fairly good time to just go ahead and host that celebratory live stream. Um, I'm sure some of the footage from it will end up being the 300th episode, but I, I guess I'd rather get the party started sooner than wait, you know, two, three weeks down the line when I finally find a couple hours free on the weekend to uh, actually host a live stream and, uh, and do it then. So better wait early than horrendously, horrendously late. So uh, it'll be on my normal Twitch channel. That's uh, Twitch TV slash Team McMason. Uh, yeah, I'll post the link down in the description. But I really hope you guys can come, come hang out with me. Uh, I think I'm going to shoot for Monday because I, I'm off work because it's a holiday here for, you know, stuff. And, um, yeah, I hit, lost my train of thought there because staging beautiful light on that HG3 also. Anyway, uh, this coming Monday, probably around noonish or so, uh, I'll kick it off on Twitch. Um, follow me over there. Make sure you're getting the notification things, etc., etc. And I hope to see you all there. Anyway, back to the normal business as usual. Uh, our core stage separated off cleanly. We're now running on the HG3, and this is the part that matters, because this is where we get to see if we're going to have enough Delta V left in that core stage to throw 10 tons at Jupiter. Well, really, it's like 11 tons, but as uh, it looks like the VAB lied to me, and we have way more Delta V at our disposal than what was shown to me there at shutdown, yeah, we're just crushing those margins. We could actually just uh, direct transfer this to Saturn with that much Delta V. So uh, just furthering the field checks, we'll go ahead and separate off and uh, make sure those photographs, yep, okay, that works. I need to make sure that we can transfer them into the core. I've never had a problem with this before, but I don't want this to be the first, considering how much is at stake, and I'm never going to get this window again. That works, and that makes me exceptionally happy. Uh, and that's just a pretty picture. Yeah. Almost neat. Oh, with the moon up there in the corner? That's pretty cool. So uh, it actually looks that we are under our weight margin by at least a ton, maybe even two or three, so we can probably increase the size of the fuel slug on this, or maybe even give our probe itself here its own little fuel tanks. I just want to make sure that we have good control authority, and uh, yeah, it looks like we're displacing measurements just fine. The uh, electrical load test, both with the uh, transfer core attached, and uh, with it running on just these two cords and the uh, transmitter dish, seem perfectly fine, which is great. Uh, I'm glad that we went up to four RTGs. It seems to be enough to power it with the transfer stage, considering it will probably do 99.9% .9 of this journey with that stage attached. Uh, this part will probably be just making that very final little bump back to Earth SOI. See what I did there? That was, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Things I go through to get a good screeny. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, let me know what you think about this uh, proposed mission profile in the comments below, and I will see all of you in the next one. So, until then, see you later.